There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is the middle ground between light and shadow, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is the dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Glenn, honey. Snooze alarm. That was the snooze alarm. Time to rise and shine. Want breakfast? No. Coffee, at least. Why are you up already? Well, I had some things to take care of. Well, you should sleep in. Well, I'm awake now. Let's go, tiger. All right, all right. <sighs> Careful. Sorry. What happened? Nothing. I knocked over the picture. Too much stuff on this table. Don't worry about it. I'll clean it up. You'd better get ready. Okay. Uh, okay. <sighs> Something wrong with the mirror? Why didn't that? Claire? Hmm? Something isn't right. Look at this magazine ad. Really a nice layout. Who did it? Claire? Hmm, not McCloskey, that's for sure. Claire! I wonder if it was Wolfus or... Look at me! Look at me! Yeah? What do you see? Oh, Glenn, please. I asked you a question. Coffee's in the kitchen. Why don't you take your shower and... Who do you see? What kind of question is that? Am I supposed to see something? This isn't me! You're right. I knew it! It's somebody acting like an idiot. My face, Claire! Look at my face! Uh, mm, mm. Very nice. Now, don't forget to shave. You think it's nice? I just looked in the mirror and... I've never seen this face before in my life! Meet Glenn Holbrook, a man who believes in the old adage, to know thyself, and who, until this morning, made a practice of doing exactly that. For most of his adult life, Mr. Holbrook has felt very much at home in his own skin. But a moment ago, he caught a glimpse of himself in the bathroom mirror and didn't recognize the stranger staring back. Whether he will discover that stranger's identity remains to be seen because somehow the law of cause and effect has been temporarily interrupted. It was put on hold the moment he awoke to find himself a new resident of the Twilight Zone. And now, the Twilight Zone and our story, Who Am I? Starring Sean Astin, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. What are you talking about? I'm trying to tell you. I looked in the mirror and... You must have had a bad night. I'll bring you some coffee. I don't want any coffee. Claire, take a good, long look and then answer this. Yes? How can a man go to bed one person and wake up another? Who did? Me! That's ridiculous. All right. The joke's over. Look at the person standing right here in front of you. I'm looking. Tell me you see Glenn Holbrook. What? Go ahead, let me hear you say it. Well, as far as I can tell, you're the man I married. Satisfied? I think I know what you look like. Not as well as I do. I know the face I grew up with. You're the same, Glenn. Then when did I get this? This what? This scar on my cheek. Okay. You want to talk about your scar? We'll talk about it. But it's no big deal, really. Since when? You used to think people were staring at you. Then you finally got it. Got what? You figured out that nobody pays attention to anyone but themselves. Personally, 
I think it's sexy. Claire, listen to me. I'm not crazy. I didn't say you were. I swear to you, I never saw this scar before. That's impossible. Why? Because you were still sensitive about it when I met you. It was years before you told me how it happened. And how did it happen? Oh, come on. Please, just tell me. <sighs> you were a child. You and some other boys were playing war. Somebody threw a rock and it hit you in the cheek. It required seven stitches. Your mother was hysterical. Isn't that right? No, it never happened. Not to me. I've had about enough of this. It's getting late. Go over to the bedroom mirror, and we'll settle it. These eyes are brown. My eyes are blue. Oh, come on. This face, this chin, the hairline. Trust me, the man I am looking at is a total stranger. Please, Glenn, you're scaring me. Well, think of what it's doing to me. I had a face, not great, but. Pretty decent looking, I thought. Wait, where's the picture? I'll, I'll prove it to you. Picture? The one I knocked over when I turned off the radio. I threw it away. When? Just now. I was only in the bathroom for a minute. I, I didn't want you to cut yourself. The glass was broken. I know the glass was broken, but where's the picture, the photograph of the both of us? In the trash. What? It was ruined. Don't worry. I'll have another print made. I want to see it. I put the trash bag in the hall. It's covered with coffee grounds and garbage by now. Did you look at it? I know that picture. It's you. Of course it's me. That's what I've been telling you. It has to be. It was taken on our honeymoon. You've hardly changed at all. Brown eyes, broad forehead, nice cheekbones, and that little scar. Oh, you can hardly see it. I don't have any scar. Glenn, I've had about enough of this. Yeah, so have I. I don't know what's happened to me. You had a bad dream or something. It'll pass. You'll see. Now, put it out of your mind. Get dressed and go to work before work. McCloskey will throw me out. I I'm an imposter. No, he won't. You're you. I know that, and so will he and Harry and everybody else in the office. Inside, I'm me, but on the outside, who am I? Morning, sir. Uh, good morning, Willard. I know. Uh, park it away from the other vehicles. Don't worry, sir. I'll take real good care of her. No dings allowed in my lot. Willard, you recognize this car, right? Sure do. Been parking it for you. How long is it now? A couple of years. And you recognize me? I should by now. Hey, um, thanks again for the Christmas tip. You didn't have to do that, you know. Mr. McCluskey pays me just fine, but well, I sure did appreciate it. Got my girlfriend some French perfume. Oh, uh, keys in the car? Wait, just a minute. Yes, sir. What's my name? Huh? My name. Oh, sorry. You want me to call you Mr. Holbrook? Well, if that's who you think I am. Well, who else would you be? Well, that's a big question. How's that, Mr. Holbrook? Nothing, Willard. Just checking. McCloskey Advertising, how may I direct your call? One moment, please. McCloskey Advertising, how may I... No, he's not in yet. Would you like his voicemail? Just a moment. Good morning, Mr. Holbrook. What did you say? I said good morning. Yeah, I thought that's what you said. You know me then? <laughs> of course, Mr. Holbrook. Is anything wrong? No. No, everything's just fine. Ah! 
Hi, boss. Janice, um, can I ask you something? Sure. I'll have your emails ready in a minute. A bunch came in overnight. Do you notice anything different about me? Hmm, let's see. Yeah. You do? New tie, isn't it? No, I, I don't mean that. You got a haircut? Did I? Since the last time you saw me? Well, maybe you didn't. I'm not sure. But I'm the same man you worked for yesterday. Unless you got a twin brother. I don't. I didn't think so. Now, let me see. Mr. Ashton's called twice already. You know how he is. Wants a conference as soon as you get in. And production needs your opinion on the Durant's layout. Mr. Holbrook? One of those mornings, huh? Not really. Am I missing something? No. I am. You didn't have your coffee yet. There should be some in the lounge. Listen, Janice. Yes? You have a mirror. Where? In your purse. Why? Just wondering. I think so, yeah. Take it out, would you? Okay. There's one in my compact. Good. Open it. Now what? What do you see? I don't understand. Well, you see yourself, right? Well, I hope so. What if you looked in there and saw somebody else? Like who? A perfect stranger. <laughs> that would be something. I'm nowhere near perfect. You're lucky. I am? Yeah. You've got the face you were born with. So, Mr. Holbrook, which do you want? Mr. Ashton or production? Neither one. Pardon? Is Harry in his office? I think so. Tell him I'd like to see him right away. Mr. Ashton on line one. Well, I'll get back to him. Where's Harry? I'm just calling. Get him in here. Yes, sir. What are you looking at? Nice scar there, buddy. <sighs> Come in. Glenn? In the washroom. Uh, I can come back later if... Uh... Be with you in a minute. Have a seat. Janice said you wanted to see me. Yeah. So what's up? Uh, just a little reality check. What's that? Harry! How long have you worked here? Let's see, three years, isn't it? Would you say that we know each other pretty well? Sure do. Why? And do me a favor. No problem. You'll have to ask for your own raise, though. I don't even think McCluskey knows my first name. If you had to give a description of me, what would you say? To who, the cops? What'd you do? Just tell me. What you look like? Yes. Describe me. Is this some kind of test? No. Play along for a minute. Ah, uh, let's see. You're 5'9", or thereabouts, medium build. What about my face? Your face? What does it look like? <laughs> I don't get it. I know you don't. Please, it's important. Oh, well, I don't know. Kind of a, a longer face, uh, dark hair, what they call an aquiline nose, brown eyes. Say the eyes again? Well, they could be green, I guess. No, no, come to think of it, brown. You sure? Hey, what's this all about? Do I have any identifying marks? Not that I know of. Never saw you in the gym, of course. <laughs> no scars? Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. And where is it? You can hardly see it. Where? On your cheek, the last time I looked. Hey, you okay in there? You tell me. Looking good. Very corporate. So, do I pass? You get an A+, plus, I'm sorry to say. What's wrong? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. Thanks for coming by, Harry. That it? That's it. Well, I'd, uh, I'd better be getting back. Hey, want to grab some lunch later? Why not? Okay, then. Be seeing you. Oh, Harry. Yeah? 
You still have that bottle of scotch in your office? From the Christmas party? I think so. You want a belt? Well, I've got a client later. He might want one. Be my guest. I'll send it over. Thanks. Some ice, too? You bet. <sighs> yeah, I've got a client, all right. And if he doesn't want to drink, I know somebody who does. My old pal, Scarface here. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the strangest one of all? There. That ought to take the edge off. Uh, maybe one more. Uh, now, let's have another look at that mirror. Eyes front and center. Here we go. Ten hut. Stop looking at me! Mr. Holbrook? Where? Uh. Mr. Holbrook! <laughs> there she is. Lucky Janice. The lady who knows herself. You've cut your hand. <laughs> he never laid a glove on me. Give me a band-aid, would you, sweets? What happened? You're bleeding. He was here, Mr. McCloskey, just a little while ago. Hi, Harry. What's going on? Wrap a towel around it for now. Nah, it's only a little scratch. What's going on here? There was a crash, Mr. McCloskey. I came in as soon as I heard it. Seven years. Bad luck. Here, Glenn, sit down. Holbrook, have you been drinking? Surely you jest. Glenn's not a drinker, Mr. McCloskey. Not until now. Leave us. But his hand. Look at that. Towels turning pink. Pretty, huh? Where's the first aid kit? In my desk. Bring it here, if you please, Miss Bentley. And then kindly leave us. I'll take it from here. Certainly, sir. At least the bottle's only half empty. Thank heaven for small favors. Here it is, Mr. McCluskey. Hold all his calls for now. Yes, sir. I'll, uh, I'll see you in a while, then. Sure, Harry, old boy. Now then, do you mind explaining yourself? The mirror broke when it saw me. Never mind about the mirror. Have a drink, J.J. It's single malt. I think you've had quite enough. You know, Ashton says you haven't talked to him all morning, and you've got Crawford sitting on his hands in production. Now, that means the whole campaign is delayed. I'll get a new mirror. I have to paint it black, though. I don't like what I see. Holbrook, you're a good man. But you've got to get a hold of yourself. Give me your hand. Too late to fix me. The damage is done. If I thought so, I wouldn't bother. Yeah, this is going to sting. What is it? Ow! You've been putting in a lot of hours at the agency. Pushing yourself too hard. Well, glad you brought it up, J.J. See, it wasn't really me. All this time I thought it was, but... Hold still. You don't have to do that. I know I don't. But I believe in the personal touch, especially for those who've stayed with me through thick and thin. You're wrapping up my hand like a mummy. Does that mean I'm already dead? I must be, because... Shh, quiet. You're in no condition to discuss anything. I want you to take the day off. What for? 
Make it the rest of the week. There, that ought to hold you. Just a superficial cut. Now, go home. Put some food in your stomach and sleep it off. Then we'll talk. You're, you're not yourself. You don't think so either? <laughs> Thanks, JJ. Thank you very much. Holbrook. Those are the first understanding words I've heard all day. <laughs> Continue, please, Mrs. James. Uh, I'm not sure what you want me to say, Doctor. Anything that comes to mind. You still have a few minutes. Well, as I've told you, I have trouble sleeping, and every little thing seems to set me off. Perhaps that's it. It? The cause of your irritability. The domestic discord. Lack of sleep? Well, my physician did say I need more exercise. No, but... no, that's addressing the symptoms. But what is the root cause? Let's try a different tack. How do you feel toward your husband? Uh, oh, it's not his fault. He works hard. I'm sure he does. But you said there's financial strain. Do you wish he had a better job? Oh, every woman wishes that. Oh, we marry them and they, they promise us the moon and, and we wait and we wait and... Yet some women are happily married, are they not? Well, all I can say is they must know something I don't. Perhaps they do. However, that's not the issue. You can't make him over, you know. Oh, sometimes I wish I could. You're angry at your husband for not making enough money. But you can't face that about yourself, so you sublimate it. The result, it comes out in little ways. You can't sleep, bicker endlessly. Yes? Your two o'clock is here. Thank you, Louise. I'm sorry, Mrs. James. Your hour is up. See you Tuesday. But what am I supposed to do until then? I see two choices. One, go to a financial counselor. Or two, trade your husband in for a new model. Well, what's been your experience, Doctor? You're married, I take it. Alas, not. Good day. He'll see you now. Dr. Blackwood? How do you do, Mr. Holbrook? I really don't see any point to this. It was my employer's idea. Here's the file, Doctor. Why don't you sit down, Mr. Holbrook? And wait for it to all go away? Tried that. Didn't work. As you wish. Let's start with the facts. You believe you woke up a few days ago with... Hmm. A face that wasn't yours. Don't tell me. It's all in my mind. You went to your office expecting that no one would recognize you, but they did. So you started drinking as a form of self-medication? And I smashed a mirror. Don't forget that. McCloskey never will. Mr. McCloskey is responsible for your being here. He thinks a lot of you. Why shouldn't he? I've given him five years of my life, and he has an option on the rest. I take it he considers you almost a son. Someone worth salvaging. I'm an investment. At least, the old Glenn Holbrook was. Was he? Well, compared to this, yes. How would you like it if you had to wear this face for the rest of your life? The question is why it bothers you so. Won't you have a seat? I'm not lying down on the couch. Whatever you're comfortable with. Now, let's look at the situation. Doesn't it seem unlikely that you're the only person who finds your face unfamiliar? Well, that's putting it mildly. But is it the truth? I don't know what the truth is anymore. What does your wife say? She thinks everything's hunky-dory. So she would have to be in collusion with the others, part of a conspiracy. Why would she be? I don't know. You'd have to ask her. Is she happy with your job? 
I assume so. How about everyone else? I get along pretty well. McCloskey likes me. So she'd have to be doing it on her own. But unless she's got a motive, and the magical power to cloud men's minds or alter the fabric of reality, they're all seeing you as you are, and always were. Well, that would explain it, but now, if everyone sees you that way, then you're the only one who thinks you're any different. Isn't that right? I guess so. Ergo, the trouble is not with them, but with you. So it is, all in my mind. These books are filled with case histories, Mr. Holbrook. Many of them far more bizarre than yours. When a man finds the world he lives in too hostile, too evil, too miserable, he sometimes invents a new one that fits him better. He then takes his leave of this world, so to speak, although he remains physically in it. That's what happened to me. It fits the pattern. So it'll help me if I see the pattern. How does that work? Even if I know it, I'll still be messed up, won't I? We have to go back to primal causes. The underlying question is, how do you know what you know? Philosophy 101. Epistemology. But did you understand it? I passed the class in college, if that's what you mean. Look, it's really very simple. If each of us existed in his own world, the universe would be chaos. The conflict is between consensus and individual perception. But science is about what can be verified, and one human mind is too fragile to rely on. Without a common ground, where would we be? Lost somewhere in the stars, I should say. But why would I invent the memory of a completely different face? Because your inner self is trying to tell you something. The thing to do is to live with it, accept it. Easier said than done. Nothing is easy, Mr. Holbrook. The longest journey begins with, you know, the rest. I suggest a series of sessions, three times a week to start. Is that agreeable? If it'll bring back the face I was born with. That's up to you. But I would say the prognosis is most favorable. Now, if you don't mind, I'll ask you to fill out an insurance form for your health provider. Louise will fax a copy to McCloskey's office. You don't have any mirrors, do you? There's one in my washroom. Why? Ah, verification. No. I know what I'll see. You better keep it locked up while I'm here so I don't start busting up the place. Morning, sir. Morning, Willard. Been a while. Yes, it has. Well, welcome back. I know, park it in a safe place. Don't worry. Yet. I wanted to thank you. For what? Taking care of my car. When? That day, last month, when I took a cab home, I left it here for how long? A week? Oh, don't worry about it. Mr. McCloskey said you were sick. I was, but I'm all right now. The key's in the ignition. Got it. Say, what's the long package? Oh, I almost forgot. Something from my office. Hand it to me, will you? Sure thing. Thanks. Oh, and Willard? Yeah? You wouldn't know where I could borrow a hammer, would you? There. All done. Brand new mirror, huh? Yep. Got it at the home shack on the way to work. That should make old McCloskey happy. The least I could do. You really had him going. Now, if I'd broken that mirror, I'd be out on my ear. 
Hand me the towel so I can polish it up. There you go. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Hi there, ugly. <laughs> Don't talk about yourself that way. Well, it's true. Does anybody like their own face, especially with a scar? Oh, will you come off that? It hardly shows, I tell you. Mr. Holbrook? In here. Mr. McCluskey's here to see you, sir. And Mr. Holbrook? I just wanted to say, it's good to have you back. It's good to be back. And Janice, please call me Glenn from now on. If you like, sir. I mean, Glenn. Good morning, sir. Morning, Shannon. Part of the welcoming committee? You bet. What have you done in there, Holbrook? A new medicine chest? You didn't have to do that. On the contrary, Mr. McCloskey, I'd like to make amends, and this is a start. Well, I'd better get back to work. See you at lunch, Harry. And remember, I'm buying this time. Sure, Glenn. You're doing well. Blackwood thinks so, too. Oh, thank you, sir. I owe you an apology. Oh, water under the bridge. A man has a right to let go once in a while. I've done some funny things in my time, too. Really, Mr. McCloskey? Tell you about them someday. I just wanted to stop in and say hello. We'll go on as if nothing happened. Okay, by you? More than okay. Onward and upward. That's the spirit, my boy. If you need advice about anything, you let me know. My door's always open. Thank you, sir. Call me JJ. Ready to turn in? Hmm. Soon as I finish with my hair. Everything's locked up. I'll set the clock. Am I forgetting anything? My, aren't we full of energy tonight? You don't know the half of it. That's a good start. <sighs> Smell that air. It reminds me of our honeymoon. It does? Makes a man happy to be alive. Mm, I'm glad you feel that way. For a while there. That's all over. I've joined the human race again. You don't know what a relief that is. Time to do my exercises. Uh, one, two, three, four. But one, tell me honestly, two, Glenn. You don't still think. That... I don't think anything. I mean that business about your face. Well, I'm still not sure if it's mine. Glenn. But so what? There are more important things in heaven and earth. I've still got you and a job. I guess I'll just have to live with it. Is that what the psychiatrist said? Yeah, and it took. And looking at Blackwood, I thought, oh, it could have been worse. What if I woke up with his face or JJ's? How would you like that? I like you the way you are. Even if McCloskey thinks you've hit the glass ceiling. What do you mean? He's about to give me a promotion. Oh, what if he does? You're not going anywhere with that agency. The handwriting's on the wall. They're on the way down. Well, all I can say is they better not be. Kind of late for me to change horses. It's never too late. Well, if I go somewhere else, I'd have to start from scratch. Oh, I don't know. There's always room for a fresh young face. W what kind of face? Take a look in the mirror. I'm looking. I'm a lot of things, Claire, but young isn't one of them. You know... When I first saw this new mug, I thought it was ugly. But that's because it was so different. Now, I've decided it's not such a bad old face after all. That's what I thought. Hmm? I mean, I've always thought that. I think I'll keep it. The scar gives me a certain air of distinction, wouldn't you say? Sexy is the word I was thinking of. Not strange? Not to me. Good. 
How does it feel? I'd say that's a very good start. Come to bed. Be right there. I just have something to do first. Five black candles to form the pentagram by one flame united. Asmodeus, Lord of Darkness, hear my plea. I summon your power. Magic words of Samothrace. Give my man a comely face. Get him, Tiger. Yeah, I hear that. You awake already? I had some cleaning up to do. You should sleep in. Did that. Better get a move on. Right. Ugh. What in the... Claire? Claire! What? Look at me! Look! Why? Please, just do it! I'm reading. Where's my scar? What scar? The one on my face! You've never had a scar. I did yesterday! Did you have a bad night again? A bad night? What are you talking about, Claire? Look! This isn't me! Of course it is. And quite handsome, I must say. Just like one of the male models in this magazine. Where? What is going on? Relax, Glenn. Go with the flow. You'll see. We'll both feel better. After you have your morning coffee. Glenn Holbrook, a man who may or may not know himself after all. Who believes the old homilies about turning over a new leaf. And that a good night's sleep can make a new man of you, whether you need it or not. Tonight's object lesson about cause and effect in the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com, where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. Who Am I? Starring Sean Astin with Stacey Keach as your narrator was adapted for radio by Dennis Etcherson and written for The Twilight Zone by Jerry Soule. Heard in the cast were Alyssa Fraden, Nick Sandys, Norm Waddell, Rick Peoples, Frenette Lebo, Kurt Nabig, Meg Thalken, Heidi Klefstad, and Sarah Court. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises and the Rod Serling Estate for making this series possible. 
This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group. Custom Foley effects, sound design, and mixing are done in the Cerny American Sound to Picture Theater by Cerny American creatives Bob Benson, Todd Beyer, Craig Lee, and Tim Cerny. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking.